Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Rant and Reflex. You know how there are those films that are often viewed as avant-garde in terms of trying something's new in the world of filmmaking? Well, it seems as though this movie may have attempted to be avant-garde in terms of comedy. Unfortunately, that possible attempt led to some disastrous results. The story features that of stand-up comedian Carrot Top, who is probably best known for his use of prop comedy in his act. He plays an aspiring inventor named Edison. When he and his fellow roommates fail to pay the rent on their beach house, Edison must try to look for an actual job. Through a certain turn of events, he befriends an elderly billionaire named Armand McMillan, who owns his own invention company. Ultimately, Edison is given a significant amount of shares in the company and becomes the new chairman of the board. Conflict starts to arise when Armand's adult nephew Bradford barely gets anything, and he decides to seek vengeance against Edison by trying to take over the company his own way. Hilarious antics ensue. In all honesty, I didn't even know this movie existed when it first came out, and probably for good reason. It's absolutely horrible. Nothing in the humor it brings out really works. It seems to think that by just constantly exaggerating the many aspects of comedy, whether if it's in the wide-angle close-ups, the cartoon sound effects, the large visual props and sets, the sex jokes, or even the fart jokes, it would succeed at being funny. But the reality is, it turns out to be the complete opposite, becoming very weird and thoroughly unfunny. Even some of the choices in the editing barely make any sense. On rare occasions, though, there may be one or two funny lines to come from Larry Miller, who plays Bradford in the film. As for Carrot Top serving as the lead role? Well, I'm personally indifferent about him. I've seen him do a few other things, and he wasn't half bad of a performer. But here, his character is just really annoying, appearing as though he were always desperate for some kind of laugh. Though that may have just been a result of bad directing. I'm not saying this movie should be completely avoided at all costs. Instead, it perhaps ought to be seen as a learning example of how not to make a comedy film. And it also shows that not all performers can transition smoothly from one form of entertainment to another. If watching movies that turn out to be disastrous experiments are your kind of thing, then this one may just be for you. If I were to give this film a rating on a scale between 1 and 10, I'd give it a 2.5. It may not be the worst comedy film that I've ever seen, but it's close. Very, very close. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes my review. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.